good afternoon to everybody. Yeah, you're right. It's going to be about uh, Slovak spa town and resorts. So it's kind of a continuation of your yesterday, actually, uh, presentation, which was also dealing with the uh, question of uh, of recreation in Czechoslovakia. Uh, yeah. Thank, also, uh, thank you also for the introduction, uh, because the project Hot Modern, it's a common uh, project um, of uh, research in the localities of Slovak uh, recreation sites. So you already have map, which accidentally actually switched, so we can, you can just look at that. Um, uh, meanwhile, I will talk about the, the background of the project. Uh, now, currently, I'm studying a PhD program at Slovak Technical University, uh, Faculty of Architecture, with the topic of uh, architecture and urbanistic conception of uh, late modernism in the uh, environment of Slovak spa towns. Uh, it's orientated much more to the history, how the ar uh, architecture of uh, uh, spa uh, localities was created, uh, how it was developed, who paid for that, and this sort of uh, uh, information. Uh, but also, I'm co-working on the project uh, Hot Modern, uh, which uh, is kind of uh, uh, continuation of the project Abandoned Recreation, and which is much more uh, multidisciplinary project which which connects uh, architecture and art together. Uh, my colleague from the Abandoned Recreation uh, uh, Art Group, actually, that's our group, how it's called, uh, we based this in 2011 in the town of Trenčianske Teplice, so it's this very famous uh, locality in the west of Slovakia, uh, which was famous especially due to architecture built in the first half of the 20th century in the style of functionalism. Um, and, of course, as is usual, usual uh, these modernist uh, monuments, which are super precious, uh, not just for history of architecture of Slovak Republic, but also common in Czech Republic and maybe in the European context as well. Uh, they stayed after 2000, uh, year 2000, totally abandoned and unused. And so that was the reason why, why we based the, uh, this association no, or this art group, uh, abandoned recreation, to somehow uh, show the quality of architecture uh, of this time. And, of course, uh, this spa town is still famous in Slovakia, and it was developed also uh, after the war, and was, uh, this continuation of uh, development continued, and again, this architecture st still in use, built in 60s and 70s, but somehow we feel that the concept of modernism at all is abandoned already. So we call the project Abandoned Modernism, and Hot Modern is actually the renaming of it because it's obviously all associated to Slovak spa towns. So as you can see in the map, uh, we have totally uh, 21 uh, localities which can be called as spa towns, which is, I think, quite a lot. Uh, Slovakia is very rich to hot springs and uh, natural spring, also for fresh air, uh, especially uh, in inhabitants of uh, former East Germany, probably North Slovakia, for High Tatras region, which was really kind of uh, popular for summer recreation and also for winter recreation. So it's on the north of Slovakia. But instead of that, we have really a lot of uh, hot springs. The, among the f famous one is Trenčanske Teplice as well Pieščany. Uh, so this architecture, this site was really developed uh, partly in the first uh, half of 20th century, but mostly after the war, uh, from since 1966. Uh, I will say why this year is so important. Uh, now you can see, for example, in this picture, that some of the places are totally abandoned right now, not to use at all, but s most of them uh, still have the, the original purpose. Uh, and it's beautiful collection of, uh, of uh, places like uh, sanatoriums, uh, swimming pools, in, indoor for, with hot water, uh, swimming pool, out, uh, outdoor with uh, recreation purposes which should somehow uh, um, be instead of sea recreation also for local people and rehabilitation of workforce but also this traditional one, the typology of colonnades uh, used for c uh, curing, uh, drinking cures. Uh, in my uh, 
research, I did kind of a registry or, or catalog of architecture and it con uh, consists of 200 items, buildings uh, designed and built afterward, but uh, some of them, or let's say most of them, uh, are localities uh, in uh, very small towns, which uh, was so-called uh, spa localities of third category, which uh, was not uh, uh, dedicated to future con concentrated and really uh, largely investment, uh, invested development and was given to local uh, companies as factories and, and really kind of big uh, companies in the localities or small municipalities and they run their own development and build such uh, recreational sites as we saw yesterday in Sharkas and Yaro representation uh, in Brno, for example, for Brno Lake. Uh, so back, back to the uh, topic of uh, uh, this, this is the interior of the colonnade, very beautiful building. Uh, in 60s, uh, this building was designed in 1966 by architect Josef Schuster and uh, architect uh, Jaros, uh, Viktor Uhliarik, who was uh, the founder of uh, main a uh, projection company called Zdravo Project, what is mean in translation uh, health project, which was just designed uh, for projection of, uh, obviously, of uh, health facilities, mostly uh, uh, hospitals, but they also have one special uh, uh, office just for uh, architecture for spa localities. And architect uh, Josef Schuster, he was a young architect at the time, he was born in 1939, so in 1966 he has had only 27 years, he was only 27 years old, and was re like Im immediately put this kind of big investments and the full responsibility of their design. So also this building was his, his job. Um, most of the realization in Slovak spa towns consists of such a big uh, sanatoriums, which in average we can say has not less than 200 beds each, some of them even much more. Uh, and so we can say that nowadays uh, this uh, infrastructure which was built at the time is uh, fully uh, used by, by nowadays owners who are obviously uh, local, Privatizer, uh, who get the, the uh, architecture or the, all the property in privatization for very less money. So there's also a reason why they not as such appreciate the effort which was given to build such a structure and really easily destroying it. Uh, other examples which you can see that really uh, somehow have this atmosphere of, of seacoast recreational sites. Uh, unfortunately, we have also examples of totally destroyed architecture as uh, Sanatorium Helios in High Tatras. So, uh, it was respiration sanatorium for uh, 250 uh, patients. Uh, this structure, designed in 1966 by architect uh, Richard Pastor, uh, was a structure which follow, followed the curve of altitude curve in the mountains, hidden behind the forest, so it was not visible from the lake uh, uh, because it was like few story highs, but long more than 230 meters and fully uh, for, and for, uh, for um, the facility consists of all balneology therapy for fresh air because it was asthmatic, asthmatic uh, uh, sanatorium and also this social uh, life. The only one discotheque on Strzebske Pleso. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, this is the state as it looks right now uh, because after privatization it was privatized by not the company who wanted to run uh, healing uh, procedures but just to build a new hotel there. So this belonged to a really famous Slovak investment group uh, who decided to destroy it totally and re uh, rebuild into five-star hotel uh, in the boom of uh, realities in 2008. And then after the crisis, it stayed like that till today. Um, the yeah, uh, actually they built the most interesting part, which was in the middle with the curved facade. And also they shorted it from the left and to, from the right as well. So that's just a torso that really like just uh, like a sculpture in the forest. Uh, 
the project Hot Modern and the content which I'm showing to you uh, is focused on the current state of this architecture. So the old pictures was sh showed, uh, let's say, in the last uh, one or two years. Uh, these diagrams, uh, as I uh, told at the beginning, what I'm interested in my research is uh, what was the purpose of the architecture, why such a uh, big investment uh, compared to other uh, fields of uh, society was invested in this, such, uh, in this uh, um, development. And uh, there all, uh, here you can see all uh, spa localities in Slovakia. I, I told that we have only 21. In fact, uh, pre-war period, uh, that was more than 55. And after 1944, uh, when uh, after the rise of communist regime, uh, all was socialized to the one uh, state owner or state own, owning um, all land and all properties, uh, we so they created a company which was called the the general counselor of uh, Czechoslovak Spa and Spring something like that, and uh, finally in 1967 it was renamed in Slovakia for Slovak Slovakoterma, which was the regular company uh, of officially and really uh, based on, um, on uh, profit-oriented, so the, it was not just about uh, uh, providing the curation but also creating some profit, and uh, we can call this, pro this company as corporation, SPA corporation, which was the main uh, leader of uh, investment in, in this field. Uh, again, in this year, 1966, was created this uh, projection company, Zdravo Projekt, who was the, responsible for all the designs, so here like detailedly, but uh, I'm sure that uh, none of this place is actually uh, uh, is giving you some information, but just shows that it was really a lot and the process of creation of such a corporation was really long process which uh, lead to creation such a, uh, of such a beautiful uh, sculptural uh, architecture. So now I would like to show you uh, just few of them because, of course, the amount of the buildings and, and realization is such a big. Uh, this uh, building is called uh, Sanatorium Banik, uh, minor, let's call, uh, and it was built in um, town Bojnice in the central of Slovakia and uh, by architect uh, Ivan Matusik, who was not the ar architect of Zdravo Project actually, but he was designing shopping malls, uh, department stores uh, in Czechoslovakia called Prior. Uh, this building uh, in, was designed in 1968-67, but finished in 1975, and it was not paid by the company Slovakoterma, but uh, by the mining company uh, who did the co who owned or who ran the uh, coal mines in uh, Central Slovakia, and it was for rehabilitation of their their uh, employees. You can see the interior was filled with the glass facade, and from the outside it has this kind of uh, shell. Uh, curved uh, balconies. Uh, architect himself claimed that as a, as a part of the antique column, which was uh, like set on the on the on the spot. Uh, what we can also see that the architecture itself was kind of modernist uh, variation of classical composition, where we have a long. Uh, one or two story high platform which, uh, on which is put some verticality of hotel as uh, in uh, Jakobsen uh, SI as in Copenhagen example, uh, for example. Uh, but here is all curved together in, uh, in the circle composition like this. And this is uh, the current state of the building, so it's still like visible some qualities of architecture, but of course it was refurnished uh, in um, in the uh, late 80s, and most of the qualities of this light modernity uh, was totally destroyed, and uh, the future of the building still today is uh, unknown because, uh, of course, after joining European Union, the amount of money uh, who, which leads to renovation is much higher, and some of them are slightly destroying. Uh, this is the example of uh, town Trenčanske Teplice, so the place where the project actually begins, and this is Sanatorium Krim, for uh, 300 uh, patients, also designed in the end of 60s, 
and built in a very short time as a cooperation project. Now we can call it a PPP project, so public-private uh, partnership. Uh, with the company Neymar from Belgrade, so with uh, Yugoslavian, because in the end of 60s, uh, the government itself somehow realized that uh, uh, providing uh, spa services uh, for foreign tourists is also very good uh, uh, income uh, of, of dollars and, and Western money. So they invested really slide uh, really quickly and build in a very short time, which is was not uh, as usual for, for such a big structures in Czechoslovakia and Slovakia totally not. Uh, so again, the interior and exterior of the building, which reminds uh, these big cruises, cruisers, uh, which goes through the ocean and, and park in the city of the city center. On the left, you can see the comparison actually was the context of uh, these late modern structures in a, original city structure, which was like a street designed. But of course, as we know, late modern loves to set big structures uh, uh, freely in the space. So uh, in the late reconstruction, as I said, according to European finds, uh, provided that uh, a stone facade of the house was totally put down, and it was uh, insulated by uh, styrofoam just to make it better uh, insulated from the winter outside, of course. So the art and uh, material quality of the, of the house actually doesn't exist anymore. And this is the last example of what I wanted to show you, and I think it's the, one of the most uh, renowned in, in Slovakia, is the 750 meter long a sanatorium complex on Spa Island in uh, Pieščany. Uh, here in the bottom of the island is former uh, pre-war uh, spa complex, which was quite uh, uh, prestigious recreation site, not just for Czechoslovak citizens. Uh, but afterward, they decided to build like the extension of it, uh, which would provide uh, more than 1,000 beds and. Uh, more than 2,000 uh, procedures per day. Uh, so this is till today the biggest realization which was which was done. And on the right side you can see sketches of architect uh, Josef Schuster, the young architect who I was, who I, was who I mentioned uh, at the beginning, uh, who was that time still in 1970 only 31 years old, uh, architect who was responsible for for this structure. And uh, yesterday, uh, here was mentioned several times the uh, name of Kenzo Tange, a Japanese metabolist architect. architect. And uh, I met with uh, architect uh, Josef Schuster a few weeks ago, and he mentioned the same name again. Like, yeah, that time it was very like popular, and uh, he admired him as uh, very much. So he was drawing uh, drawing this uh, design for the complex in the way of endless structure, which can be endlessly added, because uh, the the pro prognosis for recreation was. A Again, as prognosis of population, that now we need 2,000 beds, but in the 40 years we will need 8,000 more or something. So, design such a structure which is easily uh, adaptable for for new for new complex, uh, for new uh, growing, or next growing, future growing. And uh, so you can see some some designs, uh, which was obviously not realized, but uh, because of the art architect who came and said like, okay, it's gonna be like much easier. And then also company of Neymar uh, or the companies who realized these projects again had a really um, quite important uh, decision law how the final architecture will, will look like. So this is the, the final result. So you can just see this kind of small reminiscence of, of these uh, cubes, which we can see in uh, this metabolic architecture, which hold the core of the building, communication course, and this stuff. So, so the, this is actually final picture or pre-final picture. Again, back to this uh, sanatorium Helios, which was, uh, in my opinion, really big. Um, not just a mistake, obviously it was a mistake to, to demolish it, but it was also a big uh, uh, miss for the culture of Central European architecture or heritage. Uh, and uh, that's why we actually run this project, uh, 
because we want to show to people that this kind of architecture really has some uh, qualities which we need to somehow promote and, and create, this, not just create, but retell the story of the architecture, then they can somehow maybe better get in touch uh, with architecture itself and appreciate it much more. So hopefully, yeah, the only interior actually I got in the pictures. Uh, I just wanted to say this, this uh, won the second prize, uh, this, uh, this photography won second prize in the competition of photography of the year in Slovakia. And it's from, uh, from uh, Congress Center of uh, Pieščany Komp Balna Complex. So congratulations to my colleague Andrea Kalinova and uh, hopefully <laughs> see you someday in Slovak Spad House. <laughs> Thank you. I would have uh, maybe the comment to Hotel Helios that it's really like a monument in Štrbské place when you arriving you see this divided building and in uh, Czech Republic we have like similar case or it reminds me when a uh, quite famous hotel Praha who, which uh, was for prominent or prominent hotel and very uh, impressive structure uh, was privatized and then um, started demolition. The demolition started exactly like this in the middle, like to divide the building and to show the, 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 the gesture of the, of the power that now we took uh, a decision and we start to destroy it. So it reminds me this. So, so there are questions. I uh, first. Thank you. Uh, it's fascinating, but uh, my question is about uh, did there exist any agreement between architect, common agreement between architects and uh, commissioner and authorities, for example, Zdravo project, that architecture for those sanatoriums or recreational spaces should be different, should be better designed, or uh, individual projects were enabled because that, um, for example, like have a comparison in Lithuanian recreational areas or towns, there was there existed this common agreement which enabled architects to design more modernist or more avant-garde projects, and it was like a space for escape for those modernist architects where they can do but in more interested, interesting designs. So, uh, do you have any evidence about such a thing in, in Slovak? If you mean about during the design time. This requirement for better design for recreational areas. Because people or workers are usually tired of type design in their working areas and their living areas, and when they go to recreational spaces, they need to have a better architecture or more original architecture. Actually, yeah, uh, work in Zdravo project during the time, it was really prestigious place. And uh, if you ask among uh, generation of 60s and 70s, they are like architect generation, they would definitely tell, the, tell you that uh, Sanatorium Helios, the destroyed one, was one of the most uh, architecture who they appreciate in the, during, among the realization in, in Slovakia. Uh, but I'm not sure if I understand good your question, but uh, yeah, there, there was kind of uh, the, the way how they designed or was designing the architecture was they need to create it somehow because there was nothing like that before. There was no, uh, there was no law uh, which somehow defined how to design a building for recreation, how to design a building for curing, and how to design, for example, hospitals. So that was, for that was created uh, this Dravo project to create such a, such an opinion and then like developing it through the time. Yes. <coughs> Not a question, but a comment too, because uh, my elderly East Berlin parents spent six or even eight times their health vacation in Piestani. I never understood why. I had no idea how Slovakia looks inside. Uh, three or four years ago, I've been on my own the first time there, and now I'm 
the more astonished because my parents were not friends of modernity. But when I saw where they have been, and they went eight times of their late life, decided for modernity. I think uh, recreational architecture is a good way to bring people in the good mood with modern architecture, more than perhaps uh, yes, uh, living architecture as a type, typology or so, uh, uh, typed uh, monot monot monotony. I think uh, it's uh, an excellent, for me it's no problem, I'm architect and I'm standing, wow, <laughs> this giant line, white line, but my parents did. And that was really wonder. Yes. My question is that um, who, who's the audience of this space to, today? Uh, is there any tourism, like interior tourism, or is it still uh, visited by uh, um, neighboring countries? Or um, and the other question is, you mentioned these EU uh, monies that now enable um, reconstruction of this ba uh, bath. Uh, and um, in relation to this, like how uh, people from Slovakia relate to these buildings today, do they feel any um, um, like relation to them? Do they think that it's uh, valuable architecture or, or they would like these buildings to be reconstructed in today's style, or, or if, if it's understandable, what? Also get the free questions, so hopefully I will, <laughs> I will answer them. And one to another is much wider, but I will try to answer it like shortly. Uh, the, architect, the complex of this architecture, as I said, the whole, uh, is not as known in Slovakia. Of course, because uh, no, the, Usually, if you are ill, you're going from time to time for, for creation, which was paid or used to be paid by uh, Central Insurance Company. Uh, this ended uh, among, around the year 2000. Uh, it was also here in Germany, as I know, that uh, till the year 2000 was quite well uh, funded, but after that time, some of the recreation sites had to be um, closed because there was not as much uh, people to come or people would come to for recreation, but there was no uh, institution to pay for that. Uh, all complex in Slovakia was designed as a curing uh, therapy, therapist place. So after 1948, there was a program for 10 years, which uh, was called the hotelization. So they, they cha was changing hotel services of, for example, Pieščany, Trenčanské teplice, which was oriented for uh, well-situated people for uh, they was transforming it to like uh, social curing estates for as much as possible people and and not just for Slovakia or Czechoslovakia but also from other countries and even from the West, uh, especially after the 1968 for Pieščany and Trenčanské teplice and Bardejo, Vysoké Tatry, let's say, but mostly this street uh, was uh, dedicated also for foreigners uh, from the West, as West Germany, Austria, uh, there was some even from the United States, but not as much. Um, yeah, and because of the change uh, after the year 2000, now the orientation is uh, everybody wants to create from, this, uh, from these facilities like weekend hotels. And obviously, like there is again the change of paradigm that they're changing sanatoriums into hotels. And it's also thinking the design, uh, the services, architecture. In, actually, in it influences everything, and that's the reason why also the money, which now is provided by European Union, and saying, okay, this investment for the future uh, economical development. So they provide the project, which say we want to build from such a sanatorium a five-star hotel, and they give them, for example, two million euro, and they for that money uh, put down the, the stone from the facade and, and put a styrofoam because the part of the project is also energe energetical um, efficiency. So just that's an uh, answer to your, to your questions as well. So. <laughs> I have two questions. Uh, uh, one is a little bit similar like that, that uh, 
Do you have any any uh, good examples for surviving uh, of the architecture and the service and the hotel? Because I feel that uh, that it, it 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 is simply the the customers who have changed their mind and and they don't need this kind of of uh, services. So so what will happen? And what are you going to do? Are you documenting or can you listing or what are the main directions? Of course, idea is at least to list the most uh, important of the structure uh, in Slovakia. But there's also another question: we have only three buildings post-war, which are listed as a heritage. So that's not as easy because uh, socialist or mo late modern architecture is that one uh, which destroyed the image of the country uh, in the context of historical architecture. Let's say that's the opinion of the uh, this cultural heritage committee. Uh, our aim is to publish this uh, research. That's why we are doing it uh, like with professional also in a, in a research and also in a documentation of photographies and, and in its current state. So at least somehow this way to promote it or to preserve it to the future. And uh, yeah, as you said, uh, uh, I think that the future of these structures are, is uncertain because of the changing of the mind of customers, the, the mind or, or the orientation of the system in general. That if there is no uh, insurance, uh, central insurance, who pay for three week uh, recovalency in, in such a sanatoriums, so where the people should go? They can afford just weekend recreation and they need it to have like a hotel with fun and, what, and everything. And, and uh, my second question is coming from this, that, uh, uh, the, the yesterday question, can we call it socialist architecture? Uh, since the whole idea of, of uh, providing cheap uh, uh, sanatoria for, for working class people and, and for everybody, for the, for the, for the Czechoslovakian people. I was thinking actually about it yesterday because also opened open this question to me. And I think, yes, if something we can call socialist architecture, this is kind of it, because uh, the idea to provide uh, health to, to wide spread of society and, and to working people, for, or let's say like a, as much as possible in such uh, institutions, it's sort of program which we can call is, which is social and modernist is its uh, appearance, of course, <laughs> architecture appearance. We have more questions. Um, I, I have a question that's maybe not about the topic. Do you know uh, Mariam Omidi and her sanatorium research? Uh, it's associated to so, uh, Soviet sanatorium? Yeah. Or? It's, like, it's, it's simply, I think that your topic is very much up to date and very, everybody is really interested in these sanatoriums uh, okay. all, all over the uh, post-Soviet, post-communist post areas. If you want, I can contact you with Mariam because she's making a huge research on Soviet sanatoriums. I was doing the kind, kind of Kickstarter last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and she won. <laughs> she won, yeah, I know, because I also put some money to that <laughs> Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> because so. yeah, uh, part of our research with Andrea Kalinova, uh, we visited uh, sanatoriums in Caucasus area yeah. in Georgia. So she, Andrea was actually really willing to be also part of the publication, but unfortunately um, the list of artists was already okay. closed. That's why but I that was would asking. Be, so. Yeah, that would be nice. Actually, we, we are writing already with her. So. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, my question is about the spa in Banik. Uh, you said that there was a recladding in the 80s, is it correct? Uh, why was it necessary? I mean, there was no uh, change. It was still in a social area, a social era when they were uh, reconstructing the building. Why was it necessary? This material actually, which is it was it was uh, produced in Czechoslovakia and was called Kopilit. Now it's also produced by Pil Pilkington Company and it's called um, Profilit. So it's very similar, you know, this kind of product. And it don't have uh, uh, it doesn't have as much uh, good technical parameters for for. Uh, 
energetical causes as well. But uh, yeah, there was kind of rumors of people who used to work in the, in the or who work since it was open, uh, who said like, yeah, the director, it's, uh, the uh, director of the spa company said that it's uh, like very warm during the summertime. It's orientated to the north, so there is no reason like to be as much heated. But there was kind of this argument, so they needed to make some kind of openings there, you know. So so that's why this, they decided to make this. Uh, this uh, facade, which was like regular production of, of steel facade and with aluminium frame. But it was already done in the mid of 80s, so 20 years already. Okay, thank you. But that, because of course that, that, that appearance of the architecture like this is, it's, it's, I was shocked actually when I saw the picture first time because I just knew the picture which is on the, which here on the, on the left and it's not obvious the, the atmosphere of the, the whole circle of the inside facade. So. And the previous photo, it's, it's, it's a historical photo, it's not a visualization of a renovation. The previous one, this one, yeah. This is, this is uh, actually from 1965. Uh, 1975. So from the year, you can see the land is still like really roughly uh, just after the yes. terrain works. More questions? <laughs> it's also connected to Sanatorium Banik. Um, maybe you mentioned, but I missed missed it. <laughs> I'm not sure that um, what happened to these kind of big sanatoriums or uh, spas. Were there more? like this built by a huge socialist company as for their workers uh, or was it quite unique um, and what happened to these uh, are these firms still um, alive like the, yeah like the mine is it I think uh, also the company of uh, this sanatorium is still working but it's not owned by uh, the company who owns the the mines or not in a direct way, let's say. I, I'm not sure about these personal you know, <laughs> uh, intersections, but uh, uh, yeah, it's still working. Uh, the picture, as you can see here, it's, uh, it was shot in the September of 2014, so it's still in, the, in this shape. And uh, this was the only one example of such a big development or big investment, which was not funded by uh, government through the company Slovako Terma. The other ones was uh, f uh, financed by them. And is there any, uh, so if the miners or the ex-miners uh, go there, is there still any discount for them? Or, or <laughs> uh, Sorry, uh, I'm just asking because, for example, in Hungary, uh, around the Lake Balaton, uh, there are many of these uh, kind of hotels set up by big uh, socialist uh, industrial firms or, for example, architectural firms. And uh, it's very diverse what happened to them. And for example, I spent the uh, first 10 years of my childhood in my, the, the, this holiday center of the big uh, firm where my grandparents uh, used to work. And that time they still had some discounts. So it's just personal uh, interest. They have a very rich uh, social program and uh, instead of recreation I'm sure that they got some uh, programs for that because they are uh, retired very very early. Uh, minors like around 50 years and they can go like for retirement. So they are still in active age. Uh, so for example the other just the curious uh, curiosity that uh, they have program which use the hot water from spa uh, which goes for the uh, uh, glass houses and uh, Actually, uh, this mine is the biggest producer of tomatoes in Slovakia, so. <laughs> so. Are there any more questions? So, just, just uh, one comment and, uh, and question. Um, so, in Switzerland, we still use this material, Skobalit. So, under this, this name, we can, we can still use it. And... Um, so it's great to have this, this architecture in this in the countryside on the mountains, and at the same time in uh, in Switzerland we, we build this uh, pseudo jumbo chalet for recreation, and not this fantastic architecture. So it's it's great to, to see this. Uh, but my question is, um, what, what's about the interior design? I suppose that that for these uh, places you have. Um, 
perhaps own furniture uh, solutions, as, as I see here in the, in the Czech embassy. And it, what, what happened with this, it was, it was possible to build it in, in the shop, uh, to buy it in the shops, or, uh, and was it designed by architects or by interior designer? Well, what's about interior this? It was co really wide cooperation with other architects. Uh, for example, uh, with the sanatorium Velka Fatra in Turčanske Teplice, the wife of architect himself, uh, she was the designer of interior. But the, as I was talking to them, they said that this was 50-50, like uh, some things was designed just for for hotel, like some sofas or in interiors, uh, with the cooperation with artists, of course. Uh, most of them are not remained. Uh, and the, the second half of the products was usually buy it for, from the companies because the uh, funding was so big for, for or just the, the need of money was such a big that there was no as much money for for uh, interior design. So it was not as as perfect, I must say. It it wasn't as, uh, for example, this uh, first class architecture of Czechoslovak embassy, which was uh, like in the same uh, value or same level design as interior as building itself. Uh, maybe also the, the comment that. Uh, not um, regarding spa resorts, but some kind of hotels, which were really representative, for example, for um, international competition. There is a, this is the case where the, the furniture was designed exactly for the hotel, but uh, it, it was really um, counted that it will be international uh, visited, visited by uh, the guests from abroad. Because it was realized by the company of Neymar from Belgrade, from Yugoslavia, the architects themselves, they can, they actually was obliged to go there and choose materials for interiors, for exteriors and everything. And they were so happy that they are abroad, that they can afford what, whatever kind of materiality, because of course in that time it was not as easy to, to, to choose material. There was just this, 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 and that's all. And usually the, the building company, who was the realization, realizer of the, of the, of the complex, uh, was choosing this, or was just saying, you can choose just this or this. That's up to you. But when they went to Yugoslavia, they were so happy that sometimes in Piešťany the interior is, I even can say that really bad, because they were so like somehow happy uh, that they choose for each room different materiality and uh, different wallpapers and different chairs and this stuff that is not like fixed together. <laughs> like, <laughs> Thank you, Martin, for your presentation. It was really great. I'm uh, curio curious about uh, uh, this uh, Slovensko Terma program. Uh, how long this run? Was it a success or not? Was it sustainable? Could you tell me some uh, information about it? This uh, Slovako Terma company, it was something like a company of, uh, you know, there was like Techno export, techno import. The company which was the which stood in between uh, Ministry of uh, the Health and the company who ran the 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 spa itself. For example, the, the uh, for example localities like Pieszczany had own uh, directorate, but their chef was uh, the Slovak Terma, and they, they was just doing this uh, strategy where to build a new sanatorium uh, from abroad. How many people we need to to bring to get as much as million dollars to invest it again to some new development and this stuff. So yeah, I think it was quite successful, but it was changing. There was in the end of 80s uh, further developments with this PPP project kind of. I, of course, it's not the same model as it is now, but uh, there was uh, open calls with Austrian uh, insurance group who wanted to build a new uh, interterminal. Uh, sanatorium in Pieszczany. So they was really quite kind of successful in this way, I think. But it really ended. And after after 90s, uh, uh, that really this privatization was so quick. And uh, some of these localities, especially Pieszczany, Sliac, which is in the middle, very good for heart, uh, was uh, was given as a gift from our prime minister Vladimir Mechiar, who gave it to him his friends as uh, you are loyal to me, so I give you this. You can you can have your own spa, and of course they totally ruined it. Um, so. 
So that's why usually Slovaks think that going to SPA is really, it sucks because, you know, it's mm -hmm. old, socialist, and not really working very well. But 